Hello, welcome to uh, Porting Tips from CC Specialty Tools. You're here with Trent Blake. We're going to go over a few basic things about maintenance and uh, about our motors that we use for porting. Uh, these are the two types of drive motors that you'll find uh, that we sell at ccspecialtytool.com. Um, uh, there's two different versions here. I think some people are getting a little bit confused about what the difference is. This is an SRMC motor, this is a TXMC motor. Now what the difference is, is this SR is a new version that we started carrying. Uh, it's been around for a little while, but it's a six horsepower um, motor. It's a little bit weaker uh, than, the, than our big dog, the TXMC. Um, but it is kind of nice if you're working in, in aluminum, it's all you really need. Uh, we, we always carry the TX because in, in the old days a lot of cylinders had cast iron liners, uh, you know, hardened metals, and you needed a third horsepower to get through that. So really the difference, the, the main difference is uh, SRMC has uh, a six horsepower, TXMC has a third horsepower. Um, this is kind of like the deluxe model. Now the SR does have a neat little feature, it has a uh, forward and reverse switch, um, oddly enough reverses this way, but anyway. It makes it handy if you're in odd contra angles, you can get a left hand burr and uh, put in reverse and kind of get to those easier. And there, Every now and then there's an application for running in reverse. Um, like I said, the, the main difference that we, that we try to stress to people is you got a six horsepower here, you got a third horsepower here. Here the torque through the whole RPM is a little bit better with the TX. If you're going to be working in hard metals or anything to that nature, you might as well go ahead and step up to the TX, okay? Uh, one side note is we've been getting a couple emails about people saying, hey, you sell the same motor as Fordham does. Yeah, no kidding, man. We knew that. Uh, it kind of says it right there on the stamped into the frame and on the top on these. Uh, we've never tried to hide that fact or change it or anything. Yeah, it's a Fordham motor. It's made for us in Fordham by Blackstone. Uh, Fordham's great people. We sell this version um, with a metal foot control. So we sell it actually a slightly, at a slightly lower price than Fordham does. So we don't like to you know, mess with their business or whatever because they're good people and we've always worked well with them. But um, anyway, that's why we don't have the stickers on here that just say Fordham. That's why they're redone with the uh, CC because they're sold under us from the same company. Um, another thing is our, most of our uh, motors will come with a metal housing foot control. Uh, this is a little bit stronger than what you're going to get with, well a lot stronger than what you're going to get with a plastic one. Plastic ones are fine, it's just that you can break them, snap them, crack them. Um, this little something going to hold up for easily 30 years. I know some of the ones we get back are 30 years old. Along with some of our motors. So let's get this out of the way and let's, let's move on to uh, some of the maintenance that you need to do on your motors here. So this is an old, this is one of the versions that you may still see out there every now and then on a video or something. It's an old RMC version. If you still have one of these, <laughs> they're, they're close to two decades old. And no, I apologize, you can't get those anymore. Uh, the Blackstone's quit making those. Uh, however, we do have people that, you know, from 20 years back, they still got one that runs fine and they get upset when uh, they can't find a replacement on. But I promise you the 2XMC version is just fine. Let's go over a couple of things on the motor here that you might want to be aware of. First one is changing out brushes. Uh, brushes do start to wear out on all these style motors. Very simple process. All you do is a little set screw here. Can you see that good light? Mm, I think so. Okay, there's a little set screw here. You just undo it and pops out. There's a little brush for that. Okay. And just pop a new one in, slide it down in there and tighten the screw. Not going to spend a lot of time on that. It's fairly self-explanatory. Uh, another thing in here is the shaft and sheath setup. Uh, one thing people get confused a lot about is how this little motor connector works in. Thing is, the little motor connector is left-hand thread. Why you ask? Because most of the time it's in right-hand drive. Ergo, if it was right-handed, it would start to work loose after a little while. So uh, maintenance on that is fairly easy. I'm loosening this little set screw here. That's what holds the sheath in here. Then the next thing to get the little connector off, take your wrench. And the opposite of what you would expect, I'm turning this way. Yep, and I'm unscrewing lefty tidy. How weird, righty loosey. No. So that just disconnects the motor connector there. 
brings that down, it's a fairly long thread. Then you have the sheath here. Sheath is extremely easy to disconnect. A little set screw right here. Unscrew it. Pops it off. Whee! That, it's just that easy. Am I still in frame? Mm -hmm. Good deal. But got a little flat part here, you just line it back up, click it back on when you change the shaft and sheath. Uh, now something I'm going to go over right quick that people make a, a pretty big mistake on is they'll take this shaft and sheath and they will use something like this oil on this area. Never ever ever use WD-40 oil or anything like that on the shaft and sheath setup because the sheath is rubber. That oil will react to it and tear it up. So just take a little gr grease right like this, rub it on here, take your finger, wipe it in. Simple as can be, but only use a little grease, okay? Grease is all that goes on this. It's all you should ever use. So again, I can see I'm even doing it backwards because so used to righty tighty. I mean, that's what we're taught all our lives. But uh, yeah, reverse hand thread. Now let's go over how to adjust the uh, tip length here. This little tip you want out about as far as you see here. I think they recommend three quarters. I wouldn't get out a ruler and exactly measure that. But you want it right about like that. What you do is that little set screw you saw me loosening earlier. You take that and adjust that. See? Whoop. You see that? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that is really all there is to that. So maintenance on these things are simple as can be. Uh, really no excuse not to take good care of them. Like I said, not much to it at all. Um, never use oil on the sheath. Uh, that really kind of covers it. All right, man.